ओके सो अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग द लाइव क्लास गुड मॉर्निंग एंड नाउ लेट स्टार्ट विद द क्लास and i will be discussing the voice of the rain as already been mentioned early in the morning in the whatsapp group so i am now sharing the screen with you all let me present the screen i think there is someone to be, to join but just a minute let me share the screen yes i think bulti also joined us right now uh, good morning good morning uh, and i am now sharing the screen with you kindly confirm whether the screen is visible to all of you or not is it visible to all of you okay fine okay okay fine so the voice of the rain okay the voice of the rain questions and answers and even in the google classroom also i have uploaded one audio that is also related with the voice of the rain questions and answers okay and this material also has been given in your class okay so uh, let's start but before i start see it is written i am just crawling a bit down the voice of the rain questions and answers short answer type questions you have to write within 30 to 40 words okay 30 to 40 words each that is the word limit this thing you should be very very careful in your exam time also the word limit is very important okay now since you all did my class yesterday so you have plenty of ideas regarding this poem so if i start directly with the question answer part if i start discussing with the question answer part i do feel like it won't be a problem at all so uh, the first question is related with that particular uh, concept translation translation in the sense that remember the poet had a very candid conversation with the rain at that time the rain promptly replied to him that yes i am the poem of the earth at that time uh, it seems that only uh, the poet was familiar with the language of the rain and he translated it so that we can also access uh the form of the conversation or the part of the conversation that the poet had with the rain so uh let me start with the question first why does the poet you know his name by this time walt whitman call this poem a translation why the poet has referred to this poem a translation was it written in any other language is someone else has written this poem no so why translation because the rain communicated with the poet in an altogether different language that only the poet can understand in order uh, to make us understand it in order to um, access in order to make it access to every one of us in order to uh, access to the readers he translated it so in english so that we can all appreciate the course of the conversation that the poet had with the rain now let us come to the answer part the voice of the rain is naturally mysterious it is very mysterious her presence it was mysterious and the poet at the back of his mind never thought that the rain would reply back to her uh, uh, back to him rather but uh, to the surprise of the poet the rain did reply back to him see this line i repeat the voice of the rain is naturally mysterious and is different from our own and the voice is totally different from our own voice so the poet who alone understands it i already told you that it is the poet only who alone can understand it so the poet who alone understands it translates the reply of the rain into english so since the poet who alone understands it finally translates the reply of the rain into english i think there is someone who is eager to join just hold on yes a very good morning alia i guess you have joined right now can you listen to me good morning am i uh, audible to you okay 
and uh, I have shared the screen where I am discussing the question answers from the voice of the rain. Is the uh, screen visible to you? Kindly confirm it to me. Is it visible to you? Totally? Okay, fine. So now uh, I am moving on to the next question. The next question is related with the water cycle process. Okay, life cycle of clouds. A very important question. See, what is the life cycle of clouds? Uh, clouds are nothing but water, but they are of different shapes and sizes, but ultimately they are water and finally they, are dis they descend in the form of soft falling showers or rain, we can say. Clouds are nothing but water in the form of gas. The scorching sun, the raging sun, the blazing sun turns the water on land and sea into vapor. Now there lies the mechanism related with the water cycle process. Normally, remember it's a scientific phenomenon, but the poet had described it in the language of poem. Okay, he haven't described it in a very scientific manner. He described it, authentically he described the water cycle process, but he described it in the form of a poem. That's very important for us to know. So I repeat, the scorching sun turns the water on land and sea into vapor. The water vapors rise upwards like dark clouds and float in the sky. And remember, uh, the clouds are of various shapes and sizes. Ultimately, when you will see dark clouds in the horizon or dark clouds in the sky, one thing is for sure, rain is approaching. Finally, the clouds, because the clouds contains water, that's the basic scientific concept that we all know by this time. Finally, the clouds again return to their birthplace in the form of rain, because finally, how the clouds return? The clouds return in the form of showers, in the form of rain, the clouds returns, okay. Now, I am moving on to the third question. What question does the poet ask the rain? Who art thou? said I to the soft falling showers. Remember that is the first line, the beginning line of, the, of this poem. What reply does he get? Very conventional question, very simple answer it will be. You know all, you all know by this time. The rain asks, the poet asks the rain who she is. The rain in its mysterious voice introduces herself. As, as I told you all, dear students, rain is feminine, okay? Sun is masculine, rain is feminine, moon is also feminine. So here see, the poet asks the rain who she is. The rain in its mysterious voice introduces herself as poem of the earth. And promptly the rain, very much promptly the rain replied to the poet. Okay, the poet at the back of his mind haven't expected a uh, prompt reply from the rain but the rain replied very promptly to the poet now i am moving on to the next question the question is what is the cloud's birthplace how does it go upward to heaven the cloud's birthplace is the water bodies and water bodies collectively are the rivers ponds and the sea these are the water bodies Water vapors, being lighter than air, rise to the sky. We know the ascending. And ascending, remember there is two important words been given. Uh, one is related with eternal and another one, I guess you remembered, impalpable, that cannot be seen or touched. Very important. These two are related with uh, the process okay, of the water formation and these two are very important words that indirectly uh, expresses the mysteries that are in the world of nature that is beyond the human perception. Okay, It might be tougher but you have to learn tough things also slightly. Now water vapors being lighter than air rise to the sky. This is the simple scientific phenomenon. They are lighter than air and obviously they rise. So two important things also are there that I told you earlier in my class yesterday. Condensation and evaporation. Ultimately condensation and evaporation purifies the rain. Okay. Water vapors being lighter than air rise to the sky 
and take on strange shapes in the form of clouds okay but ultimately it descends in the form of uh, showers or rather to say soft falling showers because ultimately the clouds contain water yet essentially it remains the same old water after it ascends it changes into various forms sizes and shapes also gets changed but ultimately it remains the same old water that is something very important for us to know now dear students i am scrolling to the next question question number 5 what are the functions of the cloud or rain the rain bathes everything on the earth remember the functions of the rain okay and it seems that in the course of the conversation with the poet the rain she proudly told the poet related with her function okay the rain bathes everything on the earth washes away dust layers and cures dry conditions remember it quenches i repeat one more time quenches q u e n c h e s it quenches the thirst of the parched environment or we can say the earth parched means p a r c h e d it means dry very rugged barren dry okay we say it is parched p a r c h e d so i repeat the rain bathes everything on the earth washes away dust layers and cures dry conditions and gives a new lease of life to seeds because the power of growth was latent or dormant in case of the seeds so ultimately it gets revived and how it gets revived obviously with the help of the rain when the soft falling showers descends on the surface of the earth ultimately the seeds sprout remember there is a term just now i told sprout s p r o u t it is related with the growth process it is related with the process of germination ultimately the seed sprout and finally the process of germination is accomplished it is one of the major function one of the major work done by the rain apart from cleaning the world of dirt and dust it purifies the world also it cleans the world also of dirt and dust after the rain after the rain after the session or after or the duration of the rain or after the rain gets over the world looks cleaner and greener that means two important functions are there of the rain it purifies and beautifies the earth remember it dear students it purifies and beautifies the earth not only that it is a source of life okay life giver life force we can say it is a life giver in case of the seeds because it helps in the process of growth and germination it is a it is a form of a life force also you can say it it is a form of a life force also and it purifies and beautifies all the natural elements on the face of the earth okay that is very important it laves there is a term lave lave means to wash it purifies and beautifies all things on the earth that is very important for every one of us to remember now uh, the next question is a very stereotypical question it's a very generalized question see what is the central idea of walt whitman's poem the voice of the rain what is the central idea what actually the poet is trying to express with the help of this poem that is very important for us to know what is he trying to express the poet wants to convey the birth growth change and finally the blessings of rain it is water that turns into clouds and it wanders in the sky again that water cycle process has been repeated here also in this answer taking on strange shapes obviously the shapes and sizes of the clouds are different despite they are very much different from one another but ultimately each contains water and ultimately it descends in the form of soft falling showers that is also something that we have to remember but see here but finally in the form of water as i told you form of water how obviously by rain 
so finally in the form of water again it returns to the surface of the earth and obviously it quenches the parched environment or the dryness the dryness that was there prevalent before the dryness there is no more dryness on the earth not only that it revives the natural environment including the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom also gets revived because of the rain and not only that it beautifies and purifies the earth by cleaning the dirt and dust and most importantly the major function of the rain is that it helps in the process of germination i repeat dear students it helps in the process of growth it helps in the process of germination because the power of growth or germination was latent or it was hidden inside the seeds it was in a dormant stage from a dormant stage it becomes active and how it is possible it is possible because of the rain very important these lines are these facts are very important dear students so i continue it purifies bathes and adds beauty to all things on the earth rain does its duty unmindful of any recognition rain ultimately does its duty unmindful of any recognition that is the line there is a line raked or unraked with love it duly returns that means whether you care for it or not it never matters to the rain because finally the rain returns back to the place of its own origin that is earth collectively land and sea that is earth okay now see this line it purifies bathes and adds beauty to all things on the earth rain does its duty unmindful of any recognition unmindful of any recognition the rain does its duty human beings should learn a lesson from this and make efforts to preserve the earth human beings actually should learn a lesson from the rain we are not learning it we are exploiting the natural resources elaborately in ailing planet it, it has been described but we should being the most rational creatures on the face of the earth we should actually learn a valuable lesson from the rain but we are not learning it and that is the sad part okay that is the most sad part now one important value based question is there i like to discuss about it remember in case of value based questions normally you have to write within this word limit sometimes it is 80 to 100 sometimes within 100 to 150 now whatever the word limit is remember you have to critically understand a particular topic on which you are attempting a value based question in the examination you have to know the topic very well because sometimes you have to analyze it sometimes you have to critically analyze it also here value based questions actually uh, defines your originality how much you have understood a particular topic whether it's a story whether it's a poem so there lies the essence of a value based question so while you are attempting any value based question you will understand it because value based questions normally there is a given statement as we can find here also now see the question is rain does its duty unmindful of any recognition there is the beautiful line i am repeating once again raked or unraked with love it duly returns so whether it is that means it is a selfless service done by the rain it never bothers about any other thing see this the rain does its duty unmindful of any recognition a great lesson is hidden here what is that a great lesson is hidden and what is that rain is the song of the earth which is its birthplace and also its mother i already told you earth means land and the sea and where does land and the sea actually belongs it belongs to the earth so collectively the mother of the rain is earth and the rain preserves and protects the earth finally it returns back to the place of its own origin there lies the essence of moral lesson that we human beings should also learn at the same time it does not forget its mother and relentlessly means you can say in a very continuous manner 
tirelessly is another synonym that is very much interrelated with the term relentlessly relentlessly or you can say continuously or you can say tirelessly functions works means functions to make her mother all green happy and worth living it washes away there is a line laves l a v e s laves means washes away it washes away the layers of dust and helps the seeds to sprout again to grow again or to sprout again it gives life to dry earth and drying plants obviously it quenches the thirst of the parched environment parched earth parched p a r c h e d this term is associated with dryness so finally it quenches the thirst of the earth so the barrenness it becomes fertile the barren land all of a sudden it becomes fertile it's not magic it's pure nature it's pure nature and science associated with this but remember this natural phenomenon this scientific uh, truth has been described here in the language of a poem to make it far more interesting to us by the poet walt whitman now you see it washes away the layers of dust and helps the seeds to sprout again sprout means to grow i already told you previously the meaning of sprout is to grow it gives life to dry earth and drying plants in a way it makes all earthly things clean pure fertile and beautiful it full it makes all earthly things clean pure fertile and beautiful it fulfills the purpose of its birth by doing different duties the rain practically fulfills all the purpose by doing various activities okay cleaning the world beautifying the world providing refreshment or reviving both the flora and the fauna that is the plant and the animal kingdom and most importantly helping in the process of germination of the seeds it's very important see it fulfills the purpose of its birth by doing different duties and finally returns to its mother and rest in her lap these services rendered by the rain are taken for granted and normally we don't pay any attention to all this we are least bothered about it but this, there is a hidden message we can learn it from the rain because the rain finally returns to the place of its own origin and provides strength vigor energy vitality helps in germination and preserves the mother environment of the earth from where it has been originated but are we doing it are we preserving the environment bragging ourselves to be the most rationalized creatures we are not doing that see but in reality we human beings we leave no stone unturned to destroy his mother mother means the mother environment mother nature he is ever ready that means he is forever ready to exploit her and leave her helpless destitute he forgets that by doing so he is destroying himself and leaving nothing for his future generation progeny unlike the rain he tries his best to milk the mother earth to exploit all the resources milking out means to exploit all the resources of the mother earth to the maximum and leaving leave her all day leave her like that that is something very unfortunate that should not be done he should not do that see there lies the argumentary part that you have to add in case of a value based answer so if you attempt it make sure that critically and analytically you have grasped the idea of a poem or a prose then only you can write a value based question he should rather do everything to keep his earth life giving for all times to come and that is the reason the rain is a life force it is a life giver also he should respect natural resources and give them some space for renewal if he can if he can do it 
if human beings can do it ultimately on the part of the human beings he will be providing the greatest service he will be doing not only to his environment to his surrounding environment mother earth as well as the surrounding environment but also towards all living beings also that is something very important not only to his mother earth but also towards all living beings at the same time so that is it dear students i uh, explained the value based question as well as the six questions uh, try to access the audio links as well as uh, uh, the materials been given this material has also been uploaded in a pdf version in the class even in the google classroom apart from that in the whatsapp group also i have uploaded the audio links as well as the homework assignment as well as the materials access it everyone and if there is still any doubt after accessing all those things let me know about it uh, thank you everyone for doing the class uh, i like to thank every one of you for a patient hearing and one more important thing before you sign out of the class kindly give your attendance in the google classroom okay uh, thank you everyone and uh, see you all tomorrow thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone Thank you. Thank you, everyone.